So here's what I figured. In order to, in order to start to become proficient with programming, you need to just start developing. You know, once you learn the if, the else, the do while, the for loop, uh, the scan, not the scan, sorry, the, um, the switch statement. Uh, once you learn the basics of like the classes and stuff like that, then you just need to start developing, you know, and, and you just got to start doing it, right? Because there's only so much class time that you could spend. And there's only so much that your brain can absorb before you just got to start implementing it. So I figured let's create an address book and I'm going to let you fumble through it. I'm going to give you some, I'm going to start giving you some hints as to what you need to start looking for, because as a developer, building up your research skills is absolutely key. And so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to start guiding you. What we want to build is a console application. And we want to start building an address book. In this address book, we basically just want to, we'll just collect the first name for now. And then we'll see where we get uh, with that. And we might include the last name as well. Uh, but you, you know what? Let me take that back. Let's just go ahead and create a name. We'll, we'll accept a name and it'll be first name, last name. It's like all in one, uh, all in one field. Okay. okay. It's going to be a simple uh, console application and we're not going to save anything. We're just going to start, you know, you know, receiving information and, and we'll output it. So go ahead and share your screen and um, open up Visual Studio. All right. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a new appro approach to, uh, to starting an application. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and um, create a new project. Okay. Down at the bottom right, yep. And let's go ahead and select console app, which is already in your history, the very top one. And okay, cool, it's in your, it's in your sandbox. Oh, I'm sorry, go back. I actually wanna do something different. In the search up on top, search for empty. And you're going to select the one at the bottom, a blank solution. Perfect. And it's going to save it into the sandbox. So we're going to, we're going to call it, this is the name of the solution. So it's not even the, 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 the project itself. This is a solution, a high level bucket. So I think I want to call this one um, I want to call it starting and it's uppercase s and then uh, capital D uh, no space yeah no, capital D lowercase b as in boy so we'll call it starting db okay and go ahead and hit create and so this is pretty useless. This is just a solution file. You can't even run this. Okay, mm -hmm. all it, all it's doing is just um, is just um, holding all your project references. So we're going to add a project. And so right click on the solution and add a new project. And this is going to be a console app. So go ahead and click on that on that one. And we're gonna now we're gonna build out a namespace. Okay, so what was the name of your solution? Starting, starting, starting DB. DB, right? Starting DB. So starting go ahead and type in starting, starting DB, uh, lowercase b. And then we're going to put a period. And we're going to say address book. Excellent. Click on create. So you're going to see what it does here. You'll notice that the namespace on this right here includes the name of the solution. Mm -hmm. 
So we're actually saying the solution is called Starting DB, and the name of the project or the, the name of the application that we're building is called Starting DB dot address book. So it's the whole namespace happens to be the name of the projects. And so this is how you this is how you build applications. You you create like a root namespace. And some companies, what they'll do is, I know in Java, they'll do like net or com or IO or whatever, and they'll do net dot company name. So like, let's just say it's, you know, Jonathan's corporation. So it'll be net dot John's corp dot, and then address book. This way, if somebody built an address book, because the address book is such a common name that anybody can have an address book, what differentiates your address book from everybody else is your your prefix on the namespace. Mm -hmm. So in C Sharp, we don't normally put the net or com or IO or anything like that. We just normally use the, the company name. So in this case, we don't have a company name. So the name of the project here is just going to be called starting DB. And the name of our application is just called address book. So that's kind of how namespaces work. What's interesting here is that you're familiar with the console write line. You know what it does, right? Mm -hmm. What does it do? It displays um, a string. Or... Yeah, on the on the terminal, right? Yeah. But if you wanted to receive input from the terminal, the console has a way to do that. So I'm going to help you out with this one. We're going to we're going to open up Google. And we're going to look for C sharp. So C pound sign space console or, or, or better yet, let's just say that you don't even know that it's a console. Let's go ahead and get rid of console. Just type in how to receive input from user. So let's copy that code. And let's paste it into your application. And go ahead and get rid of that hello world. Yep. Um, let's run it, see what we get. All right. Enter username. Just type in Jonathan. So you received it and you output it. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're gonna laugh, but a lot of times when we're looking for solutions and we're like, oh man, how do you do this? There's like code out there that you just plagiarize. I mean, if programmers, if it was against the law for programmers to plagiarize code, the prison systems would be packed to the gills. Because <laughs> <laughs> Because we do that every single day. You know, we, we see an example, we're like, hey, that's that's cool. You know, let's go ahead and use that. Now, in your case, right, we don't want to enter a username. We want to enter a full name. Okay. Just I'll just put name. And then you also gotta modify the right the console right line on line 16. No, not the oh this one. Yeah. The variable on line 13, you can right click on username oh. and rename it and just call it person name, uh, lowercase, uh, lowercase, uh, uppercase N uh, name. Let's run it, see how that looks. Enter name. Cool name is Jonathan. <laughs> so, so you can see where this is useful, right? I mean, if you knew how to save data somewhere, you can start saving it, right? Mm -hmm. And and you can ask the user, like, like you can probably go line by line or, 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 or create another section where you ask for their home address and ask for their phone number. And then at the very end, you see how you're on line 13, you're storing things in variables. And then you just output mm -hmm. and you say, the name is Jonathan, here's your address, and here's your phone number. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and we'll do console write line, enter name. And you know what? Better yet, instead of console write line on line 10, 
-hmm. Let's just do console right. Right line includes a carriage return and a new line feed, where if you just do right, then they'll be entering their name right after enter name. So you'll need to put a space after the colon. All right, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and ask the user for a series of questions, right? So enter name, and we're gonna save it into person name, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, after line 13, we want them to enter their address. <laughs> okay, and then do another string person name variable. Good, read line as well. And then have them enter their phone number as well. Okay, so then after line 24, you need to do the console write line for the address and phone number. Look at you copying just like a real programmer. <laughs> there it is. Let's do something even better. Mm -hmm. After line 21, let's get rid of all the prompts and clear the console. How do you think you could do that? Clear all the prompts. So the prompts would be. Yeah, you see, if you go back to your console, go back to your terminal. Mm -hmm. You see how the you still have your prompts up, oh, up okay. here. We want to get rid of that and just display the results. Mm -hmm. How do you think that can happen? Um, so we Clearly, can... the console is controlling the terminal. So it has to be something in a console, right? <clears throat> so here's where I would recommend use the IntelliSense in. It's almost like in Star Wars, right? Use the force, Luke. <laughs> so <laughs> Visual Studio has, they call it IntelliSense. So if you just type in console dot, and look for something that might clear the console. There we go. Oh, look at that. Cool, clear. And then do we have to put all the string names or? I'm going to try I think it. if you hover over it, it'll tell you how it works. Hover over clear. Console clear. Hmm. Hover over it again. You see how it has the open close parenthesis? Oh, okay. Clear. The very first click. line shows the open close parenthesis. Clear, console, cancel event. Um, well, go back to the instructions because it has the instructions on there. Clear the console buffer. Console. So the fact that they don't have anything, you see, it's just a void, which means it doesn't return anything. And it's just an empty, empty parameters. There's no parameters. So you can't pass anything in. So it really just console clear and that's it. That's it. There it is. Pretty cool. All right, cool. I got one more for you. On lines 26, 27, 28, let's use string interpolation. Remember what that is? String interpolation? Yeah. So to make it something remember with we, these, right? The name you is. Can do the dollar sign in front, and then you can put the variables inside of the, you remember that? Mm -hmm. So this is called this is called string concatenation. So you're putting two string values, name is and then person name, and you're concatenating them together, right? Oh, okay. What, what you want to do is you want to use string interpolation, which which uses the dollar sign, and it uses the curly braces in order to include 
So you got to add the dollar sign to the beginning. And then inside of the of the quote, the double quote. Mm -hmm. We could put the curly bracy. You put the curly braces. And then you bring in the you bring in the variable in, in between the curly braces. Let's run it, see what happens. So look at the spacing between the colon oh. and the results. How can we get space that? there? Which means you could probably get rid of the trailing space, huh? Yep. Oops. Excellent. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> at you typing away just like <laughs> like a pro already so yeah so i mean this is probably your third program that you've written so that's not bad you know <laughs> doing this on a part-time basis uh you know you're doing pretty good here okay. all right that wraps up the section of jonathan codes yes <laughs> did it yeah.